if I was rich enough to go for a ride on like the Titanic, you'd okay, be dead. Go so slow! What the f man? How many trucks are in this thing? <laughs> yeah! Part of my million dollar challenge, we're always wheeling and dealing, and uh, I had a couple of things out there that I need to get picked up because I just wasn't gonna make it to go film. And then he goes, well, I'll swing by and pick up this other thing. And uh, as you can tell, we're getting pretty full out here, and uh, this crazy ass circus is fixing to pull up. If that doesn't piss Daphne off, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah! Boats, trucks. Look at that. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? Got some nice stuff here. Got some stowaways back there. It's pretty dope, isn't it? They did a good job on it. I think it actually looks better in person. I was shocked when I got there. I didn't think this thing was going to fit, but it did. <laughs> a little long here. That sweet Donzi. Surprised you didn't lose the uh, yeah, cover. Chucked, chucked it all away for you. How are people looking at you coming down the road? Uh, they're going to be going to a chiropractor here this week. <laughs> they were breaking next. All right. Well, let me get my guys. Right. We'll undo this with the forklift. Sounds good. And uh, I think you're fine right here where you're at. Cool. Let me, me get some forklift action going. Good deal. Get the forklift. Let's get to work. Uh, what'd you get? <laughs> All kinds of cool shit. <laughs> this is cool shit. This is a good load. What'd you buy? Uh, well, you just have to come out and see, man. Uh, oh boy. Please tell me you bought that truck, dude. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. That thing's sick. Is that thing freaking rad yeah, or what? that thing's fucking badass. It's been shortened to fit the, the, the bed. Yeah. Runs and drives, air ride. He didn't really do anything to the drive train, so it's like a 327 with a okay. four speed, the granny yeah. gear. And, uh, yeah, I've never seen anything like this. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sweet. I like this better than the boats. <laughs> but I like this boat in the front. I like this boat. That's a Century Resorter. You've never seen a wooden boat? You've never seen a wooden boat in person. Uh, You're in culture. Yeah. yeah. It's probably vintage. I now. think this one's good. Cool. They are vintage, but you ever seen the Mayflower? You, you've seen the Mayflower. Well, I haven't seen the Mayflower, but I'm sure you've seen pictures of it. Well, that's not the same. That's a wooden boat. Uh, yeah, but in, in real life, like. Okay. Well, this isn't the Mayflower. People are just rolling around in the Mayflower. We're gonna need a, a uh, jump well, box. Okay, so, oh, I guess about a year and a half ago, I bought a big collection from uh, Tom Haig, uh, his family, and uh, we sold almost all of it at the uh, Worldwide Auction in Indiana. Um, so now that the math is done, uh, we made our money on everything and there were two boats left over. Uh, I decided to send those to Minnesota, hopefully sell them up there. And the guy that I sent them to couldn't get them sold. So I uh, had uh, Owen bring them on down here uh, so that we can figure out what to do with them. Technically, I'm in these boats for nothing right now um, because we've already sold the entire collection. We made money and you know a little transportation so a thousand bucks a piece is what i got in them and uh, we'll see what happens i think by my um studying the old interwebs there um the century resorter should be worth around i don't know 20 grand 25 grand and the little donzi's worth around 15 20 grand you know we'll see what happens i'm gonna sell them and i'm gonna sell them cheap so if you're watching this freaking give me a call if you want a boat America. You gotta go in on the passenger side, but you can't get out the passenger side, but you can get out the driver's door. Well, the dude didn't tell me any of that shit. I figured that out on my own. Apparently, the guy that I got this from didn't tell me when I was buying it that you can't get in the driver's door, you gotta get in the passenger door, but you can't get out of the passenger door, you gotta get out on the driver's side. Maybe that's, uh, you know, Missouri uh, theft prevention. Hells 
yeah. This could have been like an escape boat from the Mayflower, like or something like that. They fell overboard. I mean, it's no, I highly doubt it. it you never know. I mean, maybe not. Maybe not the Mayflower, but maybe another boat had a wooden boat on it and it threw over. Like a dinghy. A dinghy is what those are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit something like dinghy. that. Well, I mean, if the ship was big, if it was a big ship, yeah. Then this would be a good escape boat for the ship. Yeah, totally. If I was rich enough to go for a ride on like the Titanic, I would have you paid would somebody dead. to follow me in this boat. If you see a sign of trouble, some distress, get up there. I'm jumping. Give me. Uh, but while we're talking about boats, do you think you could tell me, could you identify the uh, parts of the boat, like the, the stern and the, the bow? Yeah, that's the bow. That's the stern. That's the hull. You're just pointing that's the boat. The, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, what, what else do you want me to point at? Like where it actually is on the boat. Yeah, it's right there. It's not a yeah, there you go. The right side. Why do they call it starboard? Right side, starboard side. Left side's port side. Okay. Why? You have no idea if I'm right or wrong, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> I didn't think you did. Uh, well, you know how I know that? Because I watched a sailor movie last night. They were talking about it. Really? It was, yeah. Uh, Danny takes the one-eyed sailor to the optometrist. Is that the movie you watched? You what? Say that slowly. Say it again slowly. No, I'm just playing. No, say it again slowly. Danny. Danny? The one-eyed sailor to the optometry. Is that a porn? I, I mean, since you said you watched a sailor movie last night, I figured that's what it was. So. Well, I watched a sailor, but it wasn't that one. Oh, okay. Is that a porn? I don't know. I've never seen it. I'm going to Google that shit. <laughs> Yeah, but we need to turn that light around. Woo. Spotlighting us. Well, I mean, showing us off in our man There we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. How'd you make it go? Dude, I do like this thing. There we go. Nice interior. Awesome, yeah. I'm digging it now, Mike. New Year, Josh. A couple beers. A lake. Go, we can go tubing, skinny dipping. We're down with the tubing. What? You know, I don't want to go skinny dipping, dipping with you. Why? Because. Go noodling. Hey, somebody put a Ford in here. Yeah, the people that built the boat. Well, I, yeah, I'm just saying. 
It's the number one choice for marine engines. I'll rock the board. Bad. Not bad at all. This looks brand new. Somebody like puts money on this. Look at that. That's probably. Dave, you got two barrel holly. That's a lot of, a lot of motor for that tiny little propeller right there. That is true. All right, so I got the Donzi moved in. Uh, this is one of the boats that Richard just bought. We don't get a lot of boats here, so this is kind of different for us. So he must have got a good deal on it or something. But. He asked me to wash it, buff it, get it cleaned up, and ready to go. Um, he said that to check everything, so check the engine and all that good stuff, but I'm gonna start with the bath, give it a bath, give it a buff, that's what I know how to do. And then uh, we'll look at the motor and make sure that that's still good, and interior and everything seems to be there, so we'll find out. There is absolutely zero oil on the dipstick. Like, nothing at all. So that's strange. So there's absolutely zero oil in the engine. But it's strange because the dipstick's super clean like as if it was brand freaking new. And absolutely not one drop of oil. Well, at all. Interesting. Well, it was probably winterized because it was in storage. But do they drain the engine oil out of it? I don't know what you do to winterize a boat. I live in Texas. Uh, yeah, that's what I don't either. Uh, there he uh, is, Del Fab. How you doing, sir? Where'd you come up with the name Del Fab? Uh, my last name is Del Fell, and I fab, so it's Del Fab. All right, makes <laughs> sense. Makes sense. It's kind of like my parent company is Rollinger. Yeah, because see. I'm Rawlings, and my son's name is Chandler. Okay. So Rollinger. Yeah, but, this uh, off. Dude. Thank you for coming by. I'm sorry I missed Lone Star uh, Throwdown. But, well, fortunately, uh, you're close, so we decided to chase well, you up here, I and you know. You drove from Washington, freaking state. Yes, Washington State, all the way through. What is that? Like 2,200 miles? I think it was 26. The route that it went, because we went down through Arizona to keep it out of the crappy weather. We talked a little bit at SEMA, and I was kind of interested in it. I still kind of am. Tell me the process. How, how did it go down? Well, this was a passion project. I wanted. I just love standard cab trucks. You know, that's what I grew Me up too. in. But of course, driving new stuff's nice. And Ford doesn't build anything with options as two doors. I fresh ordered a brand new 23 Platinum and converted it to a two door. So it, it started as a four door? Yeah. Did you have to change the frame? So we ordered a new frame. I was gonna shorten it, but I figured everybody would frown upon that, even though it's what I do for fab. You, you understand, cut frames. So we ordered a new frame from Ford, changed the cab, and then did all of the center stuff to make it work. You know, there's no check engine lights, no DTCs, nothing. That's so crazy. So started with a four door, didn't want to cut it down. So you ordered a two door chassis or just yep. a frame? Just a frame itself, just a bare frame out of the parts department. So inside is all? It's 100% of platinum, full functional, everything. Look at that, dude. Big dash, this is crazy. So you went all the way down to, I would assume you're, you're did you start with a black platinum or a white? I did. It's an original paint truck too. There's no paint work to do this. Well, wait a sec, if you started with a four door and you went down to the two door and you bought a frame, well then how's this all original paint? I bought another truck, another brand new truck. Another one. What the fuck, man? How many trucks are in this thing? And I used the cab. I put a used cab on that truck, sold it and saved the original paint brand new cab for this truck so that when it was done, it was, if you could have ordered it, perfect. That is so crazy. See, that's what I was confused at. I didn't have a lot of time at SEMA. That is so badass. I don't think that there's enough story out there on that. Where you painted the frame. Yeah, everything's powder coated, but I'm not really into the rainbow Skittles SEMA trucks. I figured that the way this truck was built, that it was going to end up going into somebody's collection where they could actually drive it. So we, uh, we kept it where you didn't look like a circus clown going down the road. You don't want to look like a circus clown. But then we put high-vis orange graphics, so you know. Yeah, but that's just, that's just cool. I had to pay homage to the 79 freewheel, and that's why the wheels look like steel wheels that are striped, the grill, all the little stuff. And then this isn't one of those trucks that moves on its suspension, it's is it? It's not. It's not an any level truck. Yeah, any level. We built no. one of those. We had a good time with it, but I think this truck looks better just being this size all the time. I just want it usable, you know. It's big, but it's usable. How many miles you got on it? 290, I think. <clears throat> well, you obviously didn't drive it here then. It's 
been on a trailer. Oh, okay. I've driven it enough to show it doesn't have problems, but saved it for the next guy. That is so wicked cool. We kind of went with like the 80s show trucks, you know, with all the chrome and... Yeah, the only thing is, is uh, and, and I bet, tell me if this was a hard decision, going with a chrome world bar or not. That was an extremely hard decision because it needs it. The problem was time, and I'm yeah. sure you could totally associate time to get something that didn't look like some cheesy J.C. Whitney in it. Yep. Even though that's what they originally were, but to get it to look right. And then there was a truck done for SEMA early on in this body, all the 2017, and they put a roll bar in the back with Casey Daylighters. Like, I got to be careful that they don't feel I knocked them off. So we went back and forth on that a lot. Yeah, but chrome roll bar, or maybe even white. I don't know, probably black. I think chrome. I think chrome too. Because that's what's cool being a platinum is it wears all the chrome on it, trim wise. So. That thing is really freaking badass. How long did it take you? The process, I could go on for a long time, but we laid the groundwork. We had a SEMA spot, we knew what we were doing, but we couldn't get a truck because it's a job two production of 23. So these trucks didn't start getting built and delivered till August. That's so short. this truck showed up, I think I got it September 2nd. Um, we already had a chassis, we already had everything going, lift was there. But, you know, we technically built two trucks too because when we took the cab off the other truck... You had to put it back together. And we didn't really plan to right away because we really didn't care. But then it's coming up to SEMA, and I'm sure you know how this works. This truck's here, this truck's here, this truck's like, oh crap, we don't have a truck to tow it with. So we actually finished the whole other truck to tow this in the trailer to the show. Because <laughs> it went enclosed because it was still brand new. I mean, this truck came apart with 3.9 miles and it sat in SEMA with four and a half. What the hell kind of trailer did you tow with, a stacker? Uh, no, it was a plus six enclosed and then, I don't know if you've seen pictures, but we put 17 inch steelies on it okay. with the lowest pro tire possible. They're like 23 and a half inches tall. It looks like a full circus act. It's, yeah. it's, it's homely. But the trailer's long, so you can put the tires in it. Freaking kick ass. So what are you gonna do with it now? You say next owner, next owner. I don't know, what are you gonna do with it? Man. You look so good going to lunch in this. <coughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I could give you the, the amount of time and effort and thought process. This was a big job. What do you think it's worth? I know what I have in it. Okay, well usually uh, I find that out and then I offer half. Because at the end of the day, it's just a used show truck. Perfect. So I got 400000 in it. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't even know how to price it because it is so wild. I know. That's the tough part is how do you price it? Because the initial truck it started as was 107 out the door before anything. Mm -hmm. I hate to make you an offer because everybody will get all upset because I'm, I'm a for-profit business. And... Uh, Oh, they get upset when I try to make money. <laughs> I don't know why. Can we go for a ride? Yeah. Let's do it. Right, I'll let you go. drive. You sure? Yeah. All right. I mean, well, I don't know. Looks like easy enough to drive. It's easy. All right, I want to drive. No rattles, no nothings. No, this truck is... If we were in a 3500, you know, work truck, it would not be comfortable. No. I'm extremely particular down to the point, like, every bolt I removed out of this truck was done with a ratchet, because, you know, when you hit it with an impact, all the plating comes off. I okay. Built, I was building a brand new truck, so all the cab mounts, everything. You know, I'm not the guy that has a bin and goes, oh, those spare bolts go over there. This truck is 100% OEM, as good as it could be. There's no cut and flare brake lines. There's no nothing. There's obviously, you see, there's no issues with SRS or... It was a lot of work. There's a lot of module work to make this happen. This was not... No, I know. We did it. We were some of the first guys to do the, the Hellcat swaps and all that stuff. I do so remember that, yeah. We had hell with it, you know. It's a lot of work. I have a pretty, uh, pretty awesome wiring guy in my back pocket that I can lean on. Um, and I had a couple saves from him, but... For the most part, it was, uh, you know, just time. 
Golly, this drives nice, man. The suspension that's on this truck is one up off-road, and he did like 20 years of off-road racing and suspension development, so he built the kit that's on this truck, and he is very, very particular how the shock is valved, how everything is done for it, still being a good tow rig and usable. And this was my first run with him, and yeah, but it'll be definitely easy to find happy. parts if you need it. Yeah, yes. I mean, the majority of it's stock Super Duty. It's like on the billet radius arm. I don't know if you noticed the whole fucker's billet. I saw that. Um, you know, it uses a factory Super Duty bushing that's pushed in, so it's not a clunky heim or you know, it doesn't do the suspension squeak shit that all the big trucks do. Yeah, it's really freaking. You know, inside they don't come black headliner. They don't come speakered. They always have a seat belt pod right here for the center. They don't come with power slider windows. Like there's so much in the middle of this thing to make it be a functional two-door platinum. That is so rad. I don't think you could have done any better, man. Thank you. I, I mean, that. it's really, really cool. It's extremely well thought out. Thank you. It's extremely expensive, though. What do you really think? That's you the tough for? part. Are we really doing this? Is it at a hundred? No. No. It's stock. It was there. I wasn't even there. Stock. Well, yeah, but it's a twenty-three, and this is twenty-four. True. What's depreciation? Like seven percent, ten percent, something like that. Ah. Thirty-seven percent. I don't know, man. Four percent. I don't even know how to how to. I mean, because it's just fucking badass. Yeah, I know it is tough to put a number on it. It's really tough. And I'm with you. When I actually got done with the truck, you know, I built it so fast, and we ran into some snags on this thing that you didn't think about. Like the fuel tank, it's special to a standard cab diesel, and it's special to a 23 with an HO, 23 and newer. So it was a little over five grand for the plastic tank, the shield on the side, and the seven lines that are on it, a pressure, return, and a few emissions lines. It doesn't sound like a great deal. No, not at all. And when you're going through the spreadsheet, when you're done building the truck and you have some of those, you're like, Trust me, I get it. Yeah. We've built about 200 vehicles here, and I have that spreadsheet on every one of them. You get to the end and you're like, how did I get from here to here? Because that happened real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It cost that much to make this into that. Well, exactly. That's what happened. Man, I, I like it, but I don't know if I can do what it deserves to do. What's the what's the number that gets it done? What's your number? Shoot it at me. 125? You know, no way. 130? You're getting a lot closer <laughs> than, than about two seconds ago. <laughs> it's only five more grand. <laughs> but yeah, well, it's better than five less. No, I know, man. And it's I, worth it. It's badass. I have roughly 180 into it, how it sits. 125 would be not worth it. No, I get it. I might have a freaking cool plan for you. We gotta stay posted on it. All right, let's do it. I might, I might have a trick up my sleeve. All right, let's try it. So check out all that crazy madness that's happening around here. And uh, if you remember at the beginning of the year, um, about 60, 65 days ago, uh, I told everybody that I was gonna try to do a million dollar challenge. In other words, uh, take a million bucks and turn it into $2 million. And now it's time for a little update, let me tell you how it's going. And uh, pay attention and make sure that you uh, pay attention to the math because this will be interesting. We started out with an 84 GMC truck that was literally around the corner from here. We ended up getting that thing bought for uh, 6,500 bucks. Literally had no money in it because uh, we didn't have to uh, transport it or anything like that. Cleaned it up, sold it, 10 grand, boom, $3,500 profit. We're off to the races, right? Then we bought a Penguin. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen that yet. I think you have, but uh, it's like this water amphibious weirdness vehicle that I just had to have as part of my pissing off the D thing. So that's still sitting here. Then uh, we had a 1979 uh, Ford uh, F-150 4x4. Now I gave 6,500 bucks for it and it's still here. So it's sitting in inventory. And then uh, we got a Tahoe uh, black, nice truck. Uh, I think I did pretty good. I gave $4,500 for it, but we haven't done a damn thing with it. So it's still sitting here. Then we got into the uh, 87 Corvette. I bought that kind of for myself. Um, it, it probably shouldn't be in this little gig, but what the hell, it's in there. $27,000 for that. You know, I, I wanted it. I'm in the business of buying and selling, not buying and keeping, but for right now, 
Eh, yeah, I'm staying around it. We've got a Harley sign on here that I paid a lot of money for, $26,500. I'm gonna scratch that off the list because I bought that for the shop and to be a display and things like that. And then we got the mini tank that we rolled out and, uh, and bought for uh, $4,500. Uh, and that thing's a trip and it pissed off Daphne something horrible. So that's gonna stay around a little bit. Now we started making money because I found the three Corvettes down south and uh, I sent Big Chris on, on an emergency run to grab the 63 split window. Uh, as soon as Dennis saw that on the video, he calls up and wanted it. And then I told him about the other two Corvettes that were sitting down there, which was, uh, I think a 66 and a 67. Uh, I gave 15 grand for all three of those vets and sold them to Dennis for 65,000 total. So uh, 50 grand in profit right there. That in the car business is what we call making a lick. That's a good one right there. We bought a tractor, a uh, Ford something or another. I don't know what I'm doing with that, but it's here, a uh, thousand bucks. Now the C50 truck, which I thought was a no brainer at 12,000 bucks is still sitting here. Uh, we have it up on Facebook and Craigslist and everywhere else. Runs, drives, it's got really good proportions. A lot of people try to put these trucks together and make them look sexy and they end up looking stupid. This one really looks good and runs and drives. So it's for sale. We got 12,000 in that. I bought a trike uh, for 3,100 at the Decatur swap meet. That was pretty cool. Uh, it, we got it running and driving. It's ready to be sold. And uh, then we got a call uh, through uh, info at gasmonkeygarage.com. So I guess an email you would call it. And uh, through the old interwebs. And a guy had a 61 Chevy Impala wagon, which is a one year only wagon. And it was a Nomad, which I didn't even know they still made the Nomads in the 60s. I thought they stopped in the 50s. It turned out to be a really nice car. And uh, I'll tell you the truth. The guy told me I could have it if I just came and picked it up. And uh, so I was like, okay, it's, it's an hour away. I sent Kenny to go get it. We brought it back here. We cleaned it up. It turned out to be really nice. So I sold it for $6,500. Now, normally that would be total profit, but I didn't think it was fair that the gentleman gave me the wagon. So believe it or not, I sent him $2,000 uh, in the mail uh, for a total profit of $4,500. I thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, I don't think he thought it was worth that much, and, and I definitely didn't think it was worth that much. So I thought that was good. So he got two grand, we got 4,500 on that. And then we've got a killer 71 Blazer in here, $14,000. I haven't done a damn thing with it yet. We've got a 68 Ford Mustang Fastback and a 70 Mustang Fastback that are up in Iowa. I'm gonna go pick those up next week. And uh, we got 20 grand a piece in those. And then the coup de gras, the North Carolina car nest that we bought. You saw that, eight cars, one hit, one lick, just done and a uh, little bit of uh, work getting them out of there, getting them onto the truck. But I went there on a Friday, got them bought, loaded them on Saturday morning. And while we put out a few clips of what we bought, uh, my boy Dennis called me. And uh, I don't know if he stepped on himself or not, but he offered me some money. And I sent that truck straight to him with all eight cars on it. We paid 175 grand for those cars, all of them and we sold them for 245,000, which is a net profit of, uh, well, actually it'd be a gross profit of 70 grand. So here's the tale of the tape. So far we've spent $338,600. Uh, we have uh, sold those cars, which we have sold so far, uh, which is the GMC truck, uh, the Corvettes, the Impala wagon and the Nest. Uh, for a total profit of $128,000 so far in the last 60 so days. And what's really cool though, is I took that $128,000 that we made in profit and we have $140,000 in inventory that we still own, that we bought and paid for. So I literally only have right now, let's call it, uh, do that math real fast from there to there is 12. We literally only have $12,000 in hard cash out the door. The rest is inventory that we're holding with cash we've already made. So we put out a lot of money, we got a lot of money back, and we're only 12K negative in cash of what I started with, but we have $140,000 in inventory that is paid for. So all this stuff's for sale. Uh, I'm making more buys every single day. 
Uh, if you've got a lead for us, info at gasmonkeygarage.com. I'm gonna keep you posted on what's going on here. Uh, I've got some moves that we're gonna make uh, up north uh, in Iowa when we go pick up these, these uh, Mustangs. I think there's some other cars there. And at the end of the day, um, you know, check your math, see what you're doing. If you got a car, send it to me, info at Gas Monkey Garage. And uh, this is what we're doing right now. We're ahead by uh, $113,000, but all of it is wrapped up in inventory. So uh, we've got to sell that inventory and use that money to keep going. But uh, for now, I am a little over 10% towards my goal. Get you some of that. Matter of fact, Dabney, I'm gonna need some money. I'm going to Iowa.